So as I start on the top of the head, another super vibrant area. As I mentioned on the previous video, I've got a bit of confidence now with the colors to create that iridescent effect. And the way we need to tackle a color when it's super saturated, very, very bright, very pure, is that we don't want nothing dark underneath it, nothing that's going to muddy it. Because remember, that first layer of pasta, although it's down in the tooth of the paper, it still influences the color that goes on top, very, very much like when we're doing wet on wet with oils, okay? With oils, we've got that massive benefit of being able to allow the underlayer to dry. Or if we put a vibrant color on a darker color, for instance, below and it mutes it down a bit, we can then let that dry and keep punching the color up and the opacity as we put more layers on top. Now we can't do that with pastels. So when something needs to be punchy and this whole drawing really depends on me uh, maintaining the purity of that color, then we need to keep the pure color going on top with really nothing underneath it. Okay, so as you can imagine, if I was using black under there now, then it would, um, you know, really, really muddy it. So I'm forgetting about the really dark areas at the moment, and I'm putting in the colors, the color changes. Now, if this bird tilted his head slightly in a different direction, if the sun was in slightly a different direction, if the surrounding area was lit differently, then the colors on top of the head would all change. Maybe slightly, maybe quite dramatically. So I'm not that concerned that the colors need to be absolutely perfect to create this effect of iridescent colors. Okay, so I can be a little bit more relaxed then about the colors that I'm putting on. I'm not expecting people, and I say this in a lot of my videos, if I was selling this drawing, then I'm not expecting the client to say to me, let me see the reference photo, I want to see how close you've got to it. If you're not really, really close, then I don't want it because, you know, it's just not photographic. That's not going to happen. So what we're trying to do is always get the effect, the essence of it, to get that realistic look rather than to, to duplicate. When you're trying to duplicate and then you've got those, some artists that put the photo next to the drawing to show, wow, look how close I've got. That's something different altogether. That's just, you know, they're out to um, impress, really, uh, to show how they could duplicate it, which, it, you know, fair enough, that's what they want to do. But I'd rather concentrate more on getting the effect of it. And that's what I'm doing here, is I'm building in these colors first. I'm just going to carry on now adding some more greens in there and the blues and then I can start to think about the darks that will separate these individual clumps of tiny feathers. So that's that vibrant color in. Now I'm using a sharp pencil. The best pencils to sharpen up are the pit pastel ones. They're that bit harder so you can get more of a point with them. This is a very dark blue at the moment. It's not a black going in. And you can see how I'm using it just to roughly pull out those individual um, clumps of feathers. So that's working I'd say then in a kind of a negative way, colouring first. All I'm being careful of now is not to obliterate 
all those colours that I've got underneath. So I'm being fairly cautious about leaving a lot of the colour showing. And that's what's creating that, that lovely iridescent effect. So nice and slowly with this because I can then, what I, the plan is, is to do these uh, individual shapes and then come back in on top of the colours with a bit more punch just to refine it a little bit more. So as I said, this is this takes a little while to do, but don't want to go rushing it now. An alternative way that could have probably worked out is if I'd painted the head, um, all this coloured area, with black gouache and then put the colours on top. There's usually a few ways of, of tackling a subject. So, you know, perhaps that's something to try out as well. So obviously the, the black gouache wouldn't um, smudge at all. And then you could work more in a positive way. If I tried something like this again, I may do an experiment and, and try that out on some, some uh, spare paper first. So you can see the technique I'm using. I'm just going to speed the video up as I fill this in and then I'll come back in and add some more of those punchy colours. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon. So, nice sharp pencil, that's a Carbothello pencil, see the colour all the way up the shaft of it? That's what the Carbothello ones look like, they might other favourite, a little bit softer than the uh, pit ones. You can see now I'm putting in just the indications now of the punchy colours. It's looking a bit more iridescent again. In real life it's probably a bit punchier as well, a bit more contrasty than you're actually seeing on the screen. But I'm here giving you those techniques, not really... Uh, trying to show off what I can achieve myself. I'd love it to be able to pick up all the colours and little nuances that I'm putting on there, but unless you're going to spend many, many thousands on camera equipment, I'm not going to pick up much more. So 
So now it's coming. See how much more punchy it's starting to look. Now Geoconda, that's a great make to have. If you can manage to get a set in the UK, Europe, they are quite inexpensive pencils, but they're really punchy. They're a bit softer, but they've got lots of punchy colours in there. And uh, I really like the set that I've got. And it comes, comes out when I'm doing vibrant subjects like this, vibrant flowers. And, you know, we sometimes get those really colourful insects as well. I find I really end up using a lot of my Geoconda um, pastel pencils. Because you've got more punch with a pastel stick or a soft pastel, but when you're looking at small things like this, it's difficult to get those, you know, big sticks, pastel sticks into these areas. So that's where those Geoconda uh, are really, really useful. So I'm quite happy with how that's turned out so far. I think it's, it's time to work on this area under the beak, on the neck. Same technique that I used on that area in front of the eye. So I'm just refining the edge shape first, getting the darks in. Then you'll see me put those punchy colors in. This is that dark blue I've been using. And do that bit of separation of the colors with the dark again, then I can start working on the body.